Ladies and gentlemen, here's my mom and daddy from F and from F. There are no directions for the misconceptions of life. There are no excuses for the mild abuses of strife from your wife. It'd be so easy, it'd be so neat if babies came with an instruction sheet. But there are no directions for the misconceptions of life. Take it away! There are no suggestions for evading questions this week. There are no quick answers if it's topless dancers you seek. That's some peak. We're all afloat on a ship of fools, and everyone's playing under different rules. Cause there are no directions for the misconceptions of life. There are no directions for the misconceptions of life. The greatest brain could never explain what is truth. There are no solutions for the institutions of time And there are no disclaimers for the torture chambers we find In our minds We're lost on a mountain that's most unfriendly And the survival kit requires assembly Cause there are no directions for the misconceptions of The one man who can explain the mysteries of life. I was told he meditates on this mountain, but I have not seen him. Wait, is that him? Yes, yes, it's the High Lama. High Lama! Hi! Oh, oh I've been traveling for so long and, and through so many hardships to get here. Air Canada, right? <laughs> so tell me, my child, how can I help you? I seek the truth. Ah! Do you then seek the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the truth? What's the difference? About $40. But surely, my child, you didn't come all this way to discuss money. No, Your Holiness. I came to ask if there is meaning to life. Ah! Is there meaning to life, my child? Well, let me tell you. If you could see my furs and my jewelry, you wouldn't ask, is there meaning to life? If you could see my real estate holdings and my investment portfolio and my good clothes, you wouldn't ask, is there meaning to life? Are you saying that the meaning of life is the acquisition of wealth and material possessions? Oh, my child, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, well, yes. And is this the end result of what you do up here with the llamas? Wait a minute now. What I do up here with the llamas is between me and the South American government. <laughs> oh, this is so disappointing for me. You're just a dirty old man. You probably had a wild and promiscuous youth. That's not true. She was 23. <laughs> but I have gained much wisdom, my child, and you must do the same in your own way. For just as the wind will blow against your face and pass down through your family to bring either storms or peaceful skies, for such is the mixed blessing of passing wind, so too will there come a time when a great oneness will settle on the earth. And all men will find that oneness, and some will find Tunis and make a Tunis sandwich. But remember, my child, there are only two things in life, and that's enjoyment. Where do you get that crap? And don't call me that. I'm not your child. With all the wild and crazy things I've done in my life, who, who can, can be, be sure? sure? Well, that's it. I can't take any more. Bye, Lama. Hi. I quit. Oh, early lunch. <laughs> Life. And there is no high llama for the melodrama of strife from your neighbor's wife. Business and labor and governments, wouldn't it be swell if it all made sense? But there are no directions for the misconceptions. 
And please welcome our guest, Mr. Frank Rondell. Made me love again You came into my heart And let me live again And breathe again You gave me hope again Another chance at life Just when I'd reached the end I found a friend Now you reached out your hand to me And brushed the tears away I never knew what love could be Until you came my way Made me love again My hopes, my dreams came true Now I'm alive again Alive again You are my woman now a child you've given me My prayers are answered now And it's all because of you 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 Mark the history exam that you all wrote last week. You may be a little disappointed in the results. As usual, Seymour Brown got the highest mark. Excellent showing, Seymour. You almost passed. <laughs> I thought that I would take a few minutes today and go over some of the errors that you made so that next year when you're repeating this grade, taking this subject, and writing this exact same exam, <laughs> You will not make these errors, but will make new and different errors that, although still causing you to fail, will make my job of marking the papers somewhat less tedious. For example, the first Prime Minister of Canada was Sir John A. Macdonald, not Ronald. Also, although we never discussed this in class, I thought more of you would deduce that World War I happened before World War II. <laughs> Perhaps I should put that on the board. <laughs> World War I. World War I. Fine, understand me. Some of the, the answers that I got were particularly astonishing. Uh, I asked you, when was the War of 1812? I uh, frankly, I expected someone to get it. Uh, we allowed five years either way, but no. 
I asked you to name any two provinces. Wally Cook said, Sleepy and Dopey. Possibly he meant the Maritimes, I don't know. Some of the exam papers themselves, the papers, quite shocking. For instance, when I picked up Otto Budsky's paper, I knew he was in trouble. <laughs> Take a look at Peter Patterson's paper. We are not amused, Peter. This is Jack Thompson's exam. All it says is, God knows the answer is I don't. Well, Jack, God gets a hundred, you get zero. And surely you'd think zero would be the lowest mark. Not so. Franklin Bonsworth got everyone wrong and then lost marks for spelling. Now I can draw three conclusions from the result of this exam. First of all, you're all stupid, which I already knew. Secondly, you don't listen in class, which I suspected. And thirdly, with marks like these, you're not cheating on these exams. This is an overconfidence you can ill afford. So let's see some writing on the cuffs, some invisible ink and all that stuff. I don't want to be teaching you nutheads for the rest of my life. Pass the spiss. Um. <laughs> That brings back a few memories. It certainly does. Steve and I went to high school together. Streetsville High. It's in, uh, Name dropper. I know. <laughs> you all knew anyway, didn't you? <laughs> and uh, we actually met there. I invited him to the Sadie Hawkins dance. Remember that? The girls had to invite the guys and you wore cut off blue jeans and tried to look like Daisy May and little Abner. I remember you didn't wear any shoes. Had me worried for a minute there. <laughs> Actually, with not having shoes what worried me, but uh, it turned, I just had to watch where I stepped, you know, That's right. which is just like taking a walk in our backyard. And last year, we are trying to toilet train our youngest. <laughs> our youngest dog. I love toilet training because every morning it's a treasure hunt. Why? <laughs> yes, getting back to high school. Uh, last year they had the high school reunion. The reunion. And quite an eye opener, let me tell you. Quite an eye opener. I was very pleased that I had decided, as you can see, not to marry someone just for their looks. <laughs> <laughs> I have quite a few looks. Here's one. Some of, some of the um, best looking, you know, guys, especially in high school, had not weathered the storm all that well. It I didn't realize how old we all were, I guess. Just them. We're, we're still the same as we always were. Yes. There were a couple of, of my girlfriends that I... I didn't recognize their faces, but I knew the clothes. Oh! <laughs> Well, school uniforms are rugged, aren't they? As a matter of fact, that professor character is a true yes. life one, isn't he? Very much like our old Latin teacher. Very much like yeah. him. Mm -hmm. And in fact, to carry on with this nostalgic trip, this little trip meandering down memory lane. trip down memory lane, uh, Morag is now... I, said? <laughs> I don't believe so, no. I guess that was my boob. Uh, Morag is going to uh, get up and sing a song from the 60s. Is she up yet? Is she up yet? Oh, watch out. The wind might catch her. Get the crane. Do well, you think this fire is real? <laughs> Wrong. It's a great song originally done by the Righteous Brothers called... You're, you're my... It's called something and I know that it will, always will be. You're my heart. I can't let you do this Let you walk away Boy, how can I live through this When you're all I wake up for each day, baby You're my soul and my heart's inspiration You're all I've got to get me by What good am I? I never had much going But at least I had you How can you walk out knowing I ain't got nothing left if you do Baby, 
what good am I? Club this week to see the night watchman Chaz Lothar. Thanks very much. Well, it's very nice to be here tonight, and uh, I want to tell you right off the bat that I do the kind of comedy you can dance to. <laughs> so, should you feel the urge to get up, or if you feel the urge to get up at home, it's okay, because these gags are meant for your feet. <laughs> now, if Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? If this Peter Piper, he picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Oh, wow, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, that's far out. <laughs> wow, that's so beautiful, man. Like, you know, like, I look around me, man, and I see, like, beauty, you know? <laughs> and I say, hey, wow, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> or, like, I see something else, and I say, wow, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> like, if someone came up to me and they said, hey, man, what's beautiful? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'd say, Everything. <laughs> and nobody ever comes up and asks me. <laughs> okay, well, I guess you're pretty exhausted from comedy. <laughs> I'd like to throw in a musical interlude now. <laughs> okay, this is called the uh, English Blues. Well, I left my woman in Brighton. I'm in Brighton by the sea. Also, I left my woman in Brighton. I'm in Brighton by the sea. Oh, she's so mean and evil. Spilled a tea all over me. <laughs> Are there any foreigners in the audience tonight? Anyone out there who's foreign? Of course, if you were, you wouldn't know what I was saying, but you probably missed a lot, and so this is for the foreigners in the audience. <laughs> Okay, well that's for the foreigners in the audience. <laughs> Thank you very much. Smile. You can't make me 
smile. You can't make me smile. You can't make me smile. You can't make me smile. Doesn't make much sense. Life can't make me smile. Critics will say I lost my style. If I can't make you smile, you can't afford any hidden charm. That little sneer does a lot of harm. If I can't paint you with a grin that's warm, your uncle Guido break my arm. So how can I know now? What do you say? How about a smile? I can't make a classic work of art from a face like Gomer. You're much too dull. So one palatable. There's no point trying to carry on canvassing when all hope is gone. What a drag! It's a useless toil. It's not a gas. It's a waste of oil. I think Uncle Bruno sent me this day. It's a mafioso game. <laughs>